I'm a lane swimmer and I was swimming lanes and I thought, oh, this feels good. And yet part of me was thinking, you know, this is so easy for you, Shelley. You should think about trying to kick it up a notch, right? So I stopped and I stood up and I had this nudge. So I get these nudges where I feel compelled to act on them. So then um, there's other lane swimmers at this pool and we kind of all know each other. And so I just said to them, okay, at the end of lane swimming, would you um, meet for an informal meeting? So they all came at the end of the pool and I said, girls, I'm doing the same old thing that I've always been doing. And I wondered if you're interested at all in training, doing some drills together. And they all said yes. So we arranged to have a meeting. And the night before, I have this feeling that I need to get something out. And it's very weird. But I know when that happens for me, I need to grab a marker and paper. So the first thing I did was a little wee figure, and it was a mermaid. She's got a tail. And I thought, okay, what's next? So there was a mad flurry, and I kept going around and around the paper. And when, when the marker was done, I had a layout of a program. So there was three components to the program and I came to realize that we were going to train first, which is what I invited the gals to do. The goal is flop, 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 and kick flop. your socks off. We'll do two lengths of kicking your socks off and then I want you to try just doing front crawl without it and you will be amazed at what it does to your flutter kick. I didn't really start exercising until, really get into it until I was about, let me see you know, 58 or something like that. I didn't really, I didn't, I maybe did a bit of walking and stuff like that, but not on a regular basis. And I think I am more fit now than I was, you know, 20 years ago. Last week I um, decided just not to do drills, but do lengths. So, and uh, I swam uh, half a mile without stopping. And I was really surprised myself. So my endurance has gone up because before we started this mermaid club, I um, was swimming lengths, but I wasn't pushing myself. I was getting very lax. Zipper comes up your side, right to your armpit, then over top of the barrel, right? And you want to be coming in at 11 and 1, right? So be thinking about that. And, and girls, when you come forward here and over the barrel, reach, because remember, you're an elegant mermaid, right? Whenever you're ready, and just do as much as you can. I found that I no longer count how many lanes to see if I can get to a half mile or anything, but I swim a bit and then I start doing the, uh, the drills and they are better for cardio, they're better for strengthening your arms and your legs and stuff and it's been good. I enjoy that. Before I joined the mermaids, exercise was something I came and did because I knew I had to do it because if I quit doing it, I would be sluggish. After I started the mermaids, then it kind of upped the level of energy you had. It kind of gave a more positive outlook on what you were doing through the winter, that kind of thing. So the second part of the program was about um, setting a goal. So now we've been training for a while, right? Let's, let's see what we can do here. And so we would set a goal, and the goal would be something that might exceed what we think we can do. So it would really challenge ourselves. I even suggested that they may even want to look at something that they've been afraid to do or been putting off doing, right? So that could be a goal. It was optional. Setting goals is probably one of the hardest things to do once you're retired because it's so easy to let life drift along. Being a mermaid has changed me probably in the way I was self-motivated before and that's easy to let slip. This has brought me back to recognizing the goals that I have and others have and brought me back to encouraging others too to, to keep going and keep doing things. My goal seems very <laughs> minor in comparison to some of the other girls, but I have wanted to swim. I could swim one length and then I had to take recovery time in which I'd go <gasps> <laughs> So my goal was just to swim two lengths with no recovery time. And now I can just, I just do the two lengths 
and don't even uh, don't even worry about not making it it just came you know all of a sudden and I uh, I used to think, oh, another stroke. I'll do another stroke. I'll do another stroke. And now I just, I just swim when I get to the wall, turn around, and and come back. When I sit back and think, you know, about where I was and where I am now, I just want to go. <laughs> okay. So, so the gals, I encourage them to think. Okay, think outside of swimming, right? We swim all the time, and if you want to set a swimming goal, cool. But if, if there's something that you've been wanting to do and you wondered, why not think about setting that as a goal? So that's what some of the gals did. I had always wanted to kayak, and I had, had been in a kayak once, in a two-man kayak, with somebody that knew what they were doing in the front, and I'd never had the opportunity to do it anymore. And the reason that I'm scared to do it is because I would be scared that I would be stuck in the kayak if it turned upside down. So we ended up with a session at Harry Bailey, which Shelley set up for us. You know, Shelley's an amazing lass. And anyway, we went and we learned how to tip our kayaks upside down and learned how easy it was to slide out of them. And so now that fear is conquered and hopefully I will be able to kayak again in the future. It's taught me that uh, I can um, do more than I thought I could. and. And I really think of, start thinking about what else I can do. Um, a friend of mine, we went, went in a mini marathon last year. And, uh, and that was just a mini one, but uh, that was a big accomplishment for us. Being 85, traffic is, is a little bit difficult for me sometimes. Sometimes I really feel crowded and I feel like, you know, that car's too close to me, I have to move this way. So, um, one of my goals was to learn how to, to use the bus, <laughs> and wh wh which I have done on several occasions and enjoyed it. Um, the first time I went on the bus, one of the mermaids went with me. And uh, so uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's just nice how we help each other. And the third part of this um, program that kind of emerged from this mad coloring. I wrote the word service and um, it, it's almost like when you show up in your life, right, and, and do things that are beyond your expectation, people are watching. All the people that are in your network are watching and they are impressed by you, as, almost as impressed as, as we are of ourselves. And it fills people with the idea that, you know, more things are possible for them. I wonder what I could do. And to me, that is an act of service. There was one little thing that was said to me yesterday, uh, because I'm leaving Saskatoon and I'm moving quite a long way away, so I was saying goodbye to some friends yesterday in the dog community that I'm also very active in. And one of the younger members said to me, you know, we'll miss you so much. I've learned so much from you. And so I think it's important that as we get older, we can realize that we do have things to, you know, to give to other people and that we go on doing that. And don't just think, oh, well, I'm just an old lady. I'll just sit back and knit. So sometimes people say, why mermaid? Why are you a mermaid instead of a lane swimmer? Well, let me ask you this. What do you think of when you think of yourself as a lane swimmer? Now, when you think of yourself as a mermaid, well, mermaids are fun, they move through the water effortlessly, they're playful, they're naughty because sometimes they try to lure sailors away. It's just like so much more fun and it's funny to hear the ladies um, at the pool who are not part of the mermaid project and even the facility managers, they know all about the mermaids. And people are on board with something like that, and on board with supporting that. Uh, the definition of a mermaid is is not just a swimming person. It's someone who wants a little more out of life. So for my 85th birthday, for example, I was given the opportunity to take a long ride on a Harley. And I've never even touched a motorcycle. There's nothing wrong with going through life. You know, the way I was, I was kind of like, 
on autopilot. It was all good. I was swimming. That's good. But it's like I woke up. I woke up to this question saying, you know, is there more that I can do? And I would encourage people to answer that question because there is more that you can do and you will astound yourself. And when you push through, I call them limitations. Um, these are limitations that I placed on myself. I am a lady with an artificial knee. I can't do butterfly. Well, guess what? Bull. On my training day, I did 14 lengths of butterfly. I couldn't walk very well after it, but I did 14 lengths and I thought, come on, what's next? <laughs>